G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I have returned from Greece and I do apologize for the fact that I've missed a large chunk of this final series because I was off gallivanting in all the Greek islands. Mykonos, got absolutely Mykonos. Uh, and yeah, I thought it would be okay for me to go away for the first week of finals because I was going to be back for week two. Uh, funny story, lost my passport in Greece, had to stay an extra six days, which explains my absence. So apologies for that. I'm doing a terrible job of trying to cover this final series, but we're back today and uh, the game is tonight as the, by the time you're watching this. So we're just going to have a little look and a little bit of a preview over the two games this weekend. you got Melbourne versus the Blues and the MCG and then Port Adelaide and the Giants do battle at Adelaide Oval on Saturday night, which is two great semi-finals. I spent the morning trying to catch up. I flew in at like 2 a.m. last night. I got about four hours sleep. I'm also sick with Kentucky cough. It's a real thing. But we're just going to go through the two games this weekend and tip some winners. Last week, I correctly tipped Collingwood to beat Melbourne. I got Carlton versus Sydney wrong because I just thought we'd see an upset. Carlton have been the better team this year. They've been fantastic. I just thought, uh, you know, with the pre-finals bye, I just tipped a roughy that one. Got that one wrong. Uh, and I got the Giants beating the Saints right. And I got the Lions uh, doing away with Port Adelaide correct as well. So three out of four ain't bad, as they say. Before we crack into the actual video, guys, uh, just to let you know, we have started up a true footy competition for the AFLW season on game day squad. So if you want to take part of the action, I have left the link in the description to join the league. You can also still join the men's competition because it is still continuing for finals as well but I'll leave it there it's there in the description so first semi-final Melbourne versus Carlton is uh, a really tough one to pick to be honest this is two really good sides and uh, they have had two really tight clashes this year to be honest I find this really really hard to separate looking at last week first of all you had the D's fall narrowly short to the pies it did feel like watching that game and I did watch that game because I was there doing a wine tasting next to this pie supporter and she had KO open and I was just like sipping wine and watching it was Pretty good way to spend the trip, actually. We know the D's finished fast against the Collingwood side that I still thought were better, but the inside 50 count in that game was 69 to 37, which is incredible. The Demons have had issues this year, or at the back end of this year, with a bit of a dysfunctional forward line, and uh, I felt like in the last quarter, obviously, it started to click into gear, but they do lose... Jacob Van Royen for this game as well, which uh, will shake things up a little bit. But of course, they fell short and now have to play Carlton, which is uh, not a position that any other team will envy right now. Carlton at the MCG. They themselves had a really good you know, first outing. A lot of those players, including Patrick Cripps, if I'm not mistaken, have never played in a final before. They were jittery, but their pressure was fantastic. You know, their contested ball was great. They smashed Sydney in that metric and probably could have won by more. Though Some of the misses in that game were just, I don't want to say laughable, but uh, they'll be grateful now, those individuals like Harry Mackay in the goal square and uh, always wasn't it that sort of tried to handball and kick at the same time. They'll be better for that run and they got the job done over a pretty decent side in Sydney as well. So going into this game, I feel like the Blues have now had, you know, some experience under their belts. They've played at a packed out MCG. It'll be a good tune up for this game and I'm really, really looking forward to it. The head to head between these two sides is really interesting as well. Obviously in round 12, the D's won in a pretty low scoring clash, 61 to 44. Then later in the year, Carlton got their revenge with a four point victory, of course, back in round 22. It wasn't that long ago. So both of these sides will have belief that they can beat the other one. The game before that, the late last year clash between these two sides was also a five point win to the Demons. So we're seeing a bit of a trend of pretty close games between these two sides. So I think we're shaping up for another one here. Uh, I don't normally do these previews this late in the week. So this is the first time in a while that I've had some team news for you. But we've got the D's, got Tomlinson, Jordan and Spargo in. They've dropped Hibbard. Uh, obviously, Van Royen's been suspended. Brayshaw, unfortunately, can cuss. Hopefully, he's back for a hypothetical prelim. For the Blues, Matthew Kennedy comes into the side. That is a strong in. Jack Martin was suspended, and Harry Mackay is, of course, concussed as well. Two strong midfields, two strong engine rooms going head-to-head -head in this game, uh, which will be exciting to see. But the battle between Pitney and Gorn will also be quite fascinating. Obviously, Gorn is a uh, superstar ruck, and Pitney is far less proven by comparison. The ability of Pitney to try and restrict Gorn's influence in this game I think will go a long way to Carlton's success in this game. Honestly, who to tip? It's a flip of the coin for me. I don't actually want to see either side lose. I would love to see both of these sides in a prelim. From Melbourne's perspective, I feel like it'd be underwhelming if a side that has the potential to be as good as they are, and is certainly as good as we saw in 2021. I would hate to see them go out in straight sets again. And equally with Carlton, they're such an exciting side right now. Their fans deserve some success. I don't know who to tip here. Last week, I didn't back the Blues in. I thought that their uh, their, t their run would come to an end. I got that wrong, obviously. Uh, but this, I think, is a much tougher opponent, to be honest, particularly because it's not a home game. Melbourne's finals experience might give them the edge in this game. I feel like Carlton's been in the better form of these two sides, so I really don't know what to expect here. But I think I'm going to go and be a basic bitch, and I think the Ds win this by a 
tight margin of five points. Wow, how heartbreaking that would be for the Blues fans. But that's the way I'm tipping it. It's a real 50-50, but I don't really know. Okay, guys, before I continue with the rest of the video, I did want to bring you a message on behalf of the sponsors, Game Day Squad. As you may be aware, I've started working with Game Day Squad this year and been playing along with their brand new fantasy platform, which has been unreal fun. So I've got a little message for you on behalf of them. Another reason why I love playing Game Day Squad is that they are the only ones running AFL fantasy through the finals this year. It's time to get your squads ready. This is gonna be fantastic. You could be the only fantasy coach ever to win in finals footy for AFL. And if you have been playing throughout the season and perhaps you didn't go too well, well, this is your chance to start afresh and redeem yourself in finals and potentially still win some weekly prizes. Make sure you click the link in the description of this video. It is the top link. Create yourself a team if you don't have one already or make sure you're in the true footy league. We'll talk about the other semi-final, of course, between the Power and the Giants. And uh, obviously last week, the Power got unceremoniously dumped. Well, they, they sort of rallied in the second term against, you know, a really strong team at home at the Gabba. Uh, I think it was 16 points at half time, And then it was like nine goals or eight goals to four in the third term. The Lions never really looked challenged after that. And they blitzed them in the second half. The Giants are coming off a pretty steady victory victory against the Saints. There were a few goals that had pretty much every change. They just locked the better team. Their run and dash was a real feature. Arguably ran the Saints off their feet and uh, they've been bolstered again for this game with Stephen Cornelio coming back into the side. So we'll look at the head-to-head. -head. You know, these two sides met back in round 22, again, similar to Carlton and Melbourne. We did see Port Adelaide come out and win by 51 points. From memory, that was the game that snapped their losing streak. And uh, round 17 last year at the same venue, again at Adelaide Oval, we saw the power win 84 to 29. Both of these sides missed finals last year as well which is worth noting. So it's not like one team was good last year and one wasn't. Both of these sides were had disappointing patches last year. So interestingly, the Giants haven't beaten Port since 2019, which is like the last time Port Adelaide weren't good. Uh, I suppose if you exclude last year. Last year was kind of a weird one. We felt like there was a good team underneath. They just like massively underperformed. But what will give the Giants a little bit of confidence is the fact that they've beaten the Crows at Adelaide Oval this year. So the head-to-head -head between these two sides is pretty heavily slanted to the home side here. In terms of the team news, you got Dixon coming in for Finlayson who's been dropped and uh, Cornelio comes in for O'Halloran as well. So both of these sides strengthened from their elimination final sides, you'd say. Again, this one is a fascinating battle of the midfields. You've got the power who are one of the best center bounce clearance sides in the competition. We know how good their midfield is. You've got uh, Butters and Rosie in particular. You've got Horn Francis in there, Bokes playing, Wines. Coming up against a very formidable midfield in Tom Green, Cornelio and Josh Kelly as well. So that is likely to be where the game's won and lost. And of course, watch out for Toby Green. So who am I tipping? Uh, I think the form line of Port Adelaide in general at home and their recent two performances against the Giants at this ground are pretty compelling for me. Back end of the year, the power haven't been convincing. The Giants have really showed up and um, really earned that final spot and of course won a final. And interestingly, you know, I, I believe the Giants have won a final in every finals campaign they've ever had. That's really impressive. So who's going to win this game? I think there is a chance Toby Green steps up and uh, delivers his side a shock prelim berth. But I think I'm going to respect the home team here. I think they're going to be too good at home. If they lose and go out in straight sets, imagine the reaction from power fans uh, with respect to Ken Hinckley's position. But going to tip the home side. I think the power will show up in a big way. They'll qualify for a prelim and I'll say they win this game by 29 points. But anyway, guys, that is just my thoughts and opinions on this week's semifinals. Again, sorry it's late, uh, but let me know in the comments regardless what you think, and we'll see in about 48 hours how wrong I was. But it's exciting. That would set up prelims of uh, Brisbane versus Melbourne at the Gabba and Collingwood versus Port Adelaide at the MCG, which would be a very tasty matchup. But as always, guys, thanks for your support. I'm back now. I'm back in the country. Uh, obviously, I have no passport, really. I've got to go... I can't leave the country for six weeks. I've got to get a new one. But looking forward to the final series and, uh, you know, the trade period after that, it's going to be great. But for now, goodbye, and I'll see you next week. Cheers.